What's up out there in YouTube land? This is a Handy Saves Money with another video. So, I'm making this video in response to uh, an interesting video I saw today on YouTube. I flipped open my phone as I was at work today, and the first video was uh, Double Your Internet Speed for Free. So, Double Your Internet Speed for Free. I says, I gotta take a look at this because I'll tell you. I've been working on computers my whole life. I'm a senior level security engineer for computer systems, for the government. So I know what I'm talking about. So I figure this is going to be 100% crap, but let's take a look. And so this guy proceeds to tell you, well, I'm going to tell you this great thing that the internet companies don't want you to know. Well, yeah, because if you watch this video, and you're gullible enough to do what's in this video, the internet companies don't want you to know because if you're that gullible, you're probably going to accidentally slit your wrist and bleed to death, and you're going to render them one less customer. So, of course, the internet companies don't want you to know. So, you know, and he goes on to say, well, you won't have to pay them for an additional plan. Okay. So, he proceeds to say, take this piece of Cat5 cable and figure out how long it is, and then you're going to get your another cable just like it or I'm gonna cut five feet out of my box those of us that know what cat 5 e cable is which is what he has knows that it's rated for far faster speeds than you could ever use on a normal home computer so the guy obviously has some kind of computer background or he wouldn't have a 500 foot box of cat 5 cable laying around his house but hey we'll let him go on so he goes on to say wrap it around this connector thing well it's called an RJ45 connector not a connector thing but you know we'll go on and then we're going to wrap it three times around the end. Is three the magic number? Did I miss a memo? I mean, hell, maybe I should be moving my mouse in a circle three times when I fire up my computer to make it go faster. Or maybe I should turn my car keys on and off three times in the ignition, and it would make my car faster. I'm going to have to look into this. I'll get back to you. So we go on down, and he says, oh, well, this is the same thing as you get from monster cables and all kind of good stuff at Best Buy, and gold plating doesn't really matter. Gold plating doesn't matter? Okay, seriously, gold plating doesn't matter. Um, why would they use gold on connectors, I wonder? Hmm. Let's think about that for a minute. Oh, why? Because gold resists oxidation, because it's a precious metal. And <laughs> so your connections won't oxidize. That's why high-end high cables use gold connectors. And your $2 cables don't. Why? Because eventually your connectors will oxidize. Does it really matter one way or another? No, probably not. But there's a reason. Everything's got a reason. So, he says, well, if you know physics, or even if you don't, I'm going to go on to explain this mathematically speaking. So, he, he brings up Kirchhoff's current law and Gauss's law. So, Gauss's law says that the enclosed current of a Gaussian surface times epsilon sub-zero of the surface interval of the electric field of, times the derivative of the surface area. Well, that all sounds fine and dandy, but he's talking about a piece of copper wire or some sort of conductor. He's not talking about a Cat5 cable. Because inside that little Cat5 cable, you might notice that little connector on the end. You'll notice that there are eight contacts on the end of that cable. On that cable, why is that? Because it's Cat5 cable. There are four pairs of wires in there, and so the surface area of the conductor is the surface area of each one of those eight tiny little wires in there, not the surface area of the cable, and the insulation on the eight wires and the insulation around the outside to make it look pretty, and probably a piece of nylon filament in there to give the cable some, some more integrity. So instead of using the actual diameter of the contact, the, the cables that conduct the current, we're going to use the overall cable. This makes a lot of sense, right? Okay, no. But yet this guy's got three million and some views in a day and a half. You're kidding me. All right, so moving right along. The information constant is the amount of information that can pass through the wire. Okay. No, there's the information constant. The, the amount of information that can be passed across the wire is a freaking function of the protocol that's passing data through that wire. It has nothing to do with the information constant. There's no information constant that magically governs all internet and other traffic that could possibly trans, transmit it across the cable. Give me a break. So moving right along, the wire is cylindrical, therefore A equals pi r squared. Well, anybody that's got a sixth grade math education know that A equals pi r squared. What the hell that has to do with the outside of a cable with eight conductors in it? I have no idea. If one of y'all out there can figure it out, please let me know. So, con continuing right on, he's saying we connected the two wires. No, you didn't. You wrapped one wire around the other wire. And inside, out, and there's an outside piece of insulation, and then there's eight little wires in there. 
So you didn't connect anything. You just wrapped one wire around another with electrical tape to stop the current from getting out. Getting out? There's no current in there to begin with. Why? Because the wires aren't actually connected. So, moving right along. He says, uh... So the surface area of the wire, we're doubling the surface area of the wire and therefore making your internet faster. Well, let me let you in on a little secret here. A, you're not doubling the surface area because the surface area to be doubled would be the, each one of those eight conductors inside that wire. But B, there are so rare circumstances when a wire would actually cause you problems. There are only two real, possible, plausible circumstances in which your wire would be limiting your connection speed. One is, one of the conductors is broken. Or two, is that your wire was manufactured 15 plus years ago and the quality of the conductors in the wire are so bad that it can't possibly conduct enough electricity. Because you gotta remember, computers talk in binary, ones and zeros, on and off. So when a computer is talking, if you were to put a, a high-speed voltmeter, let's say, on that wire to actually look what's happening, all you would see is on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Because when you have a con connection between, say, your computer and your router, of those eight, five, eight conductors inside that Cat5 wire, only four are used. Pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, and pin 6. Pin 1 and 2 are transmit. Anybody that has the basic familiarity with electronic circuit knows you have to have a positive and a negative. So you have a positive and negative transmit, and you have a positive and a negative receive. So on your transmit, if I'm transmitting, positive and negative, and you can turn that circuit on or off. So that gives you what happens at the other end. It reads it as on or off. Is it voltage turned on or is it turned off? And then when that device talks back to you again, well, then you have the same thing. It's turning it pin pin 3 and pin 6, it's saying, is this circuit on or off? And so I know I'm sending on and off voltage, and I'm receiving on and off voltage. That's how that's what's going through that little wire there. It's just on and off. That's all that's happening. On, off, on, off. Zero, one, zero, one, binary. That's how a computer talks to another computer. So, yes, you math mathematically proved it, all right. You mathematically proved that 2 plus 2 is 17. But anybody that's got a 6th grade education probably already figured it out. However, there are people in here that were asking questions about the logistics of wrapping the tape and can I use a different kind of tape and this and that. You might as well wrap it with string or maybe an old jock strap. Maybe that'll speed up your connection. So let's let's look at the, a speed test. You go out on your computer and you say www.speedtest.net. What does that give you? And you run your little test and it says, oh, I got 15 down and I got one up. So Normally, at the time, the internet companies say, you know, we have a 5 meg connection. Well, 5 megs is 5 megabytes. A megabyte is 1,024 megabits. A megabit is 1,024 bits. One bit is on or off. So every bit is either on or off. So you take your one on or off is, is a bit, multiply it by 1024, that gives you a kilobyte. Multiply that by 1024, that gives you a megabyte, or a megabit, I'm sorry. So, bits are on or off. Bits, kilobits, megabits. So, you go out to your speed test and it tells you megabits. Now, your server on a speed test is made for one thing, to test your speed. So, the server is going to respond to you as absolutely fast as it can when you send that request. But if I go to say www.downloadmusic.com and I want to download an mp3, the server at the other end isn't going to push out that music as fast as it possibly can. Why? Because the server is just a big computer. Okay, imagine your little computer at home times 10. There's your server. Now, it still has the same limitations as your home computer does the hard drive in your system. You can read from it at about 30 megabytes a minute and you can, or I'm sorry, 30 megabytes a second. You can write to it at about 15 megabytes a second. So, if I'm downloading stuff at 20 megs a second, can I possibly write it that fast? No, because my hard drive won't, won't write that fast and I don't have enough RAM in my system to sustain that kind of activity for very long. So I can't download faster than I can save the data, right? But, at the other end, the internet service provider, or the, the site host, is saying, well, 
I can push out, let's say I can push out 100 megs at one time. Well, if I have five users at 20 megs, I'm using up that server. And so I have to buy more servers so that more people can connect to my website. But if I limit each user that connects to one meg, now I can connect 100 users to that same server. I don't have to buy as much stuff. That's good for me as a service provider because then it saves me money on infrastructure costs. Because remember, all this is... Uh, all, all the internet is is a whole network of computers connected together. You know, at home you have your computers and your phone and they're all connected to your wireless router. Well, that's all the internet is, is a whole buttload of computers and servers connected together through a big network. So take what's in your house and multiply it by about a million and you have what's, what is the internet. All it is is a whole bunch of computers that are networked together and organized so that you can type in www.google.com and you can look at something. That's all it is. It is an organized way to access a whole bunch of computers that are connected together. So, at the end of the day, it's not about well, how fast your little cable is that connects from your computer to your router at the house because A, the servers at the other end aren't going to push out more than a meg or a meg and a half a second and B, chances are, unless you bought your computer in the last two years, your computer can't save more than a meg a second of data because it has to take that data off the wire, translate, you know, transform it into the format that it's going to save it on the hard drive, and then write it to the hard drive. So, unless your computer is very fast, like my computer, I can download maybe 1.2 megs a second. That's as good as it gets. And I've got a fast computer. It's a server. I've got two processors. I've got 16 gigs of RAM. i got all kind of good stuff. But I'm still not able to download from any given site more than 1.2 megs a second. Why? Because A, the other end is not putting out that much, and B, even if they were putting out more than that, I couldn't save it any faster than that. Because that's as fast as your computer is going to work. So anybody that tells you you need to buy a 10, 10 megabit connection or a 20 megabit connection or a 40 megabit connection, they're just trying to sell you something. Because realistically, you couldn't, if I had five computers going at my house downloading torrents all day long, I might be using five megs. Maybe. Five computers downloading music and movies or uh, games or whatever the case may be. It could be, you know, plans for the space shuttle. Who cares? If I got five computers that are running to the max, I might use five megabits of my internet connection. I'm not going to use 20 or 40 or 100. You know, the cable companies don't want you to know this. No, they don't care. The cable companies have the ability to push out up to 100 megs a second. But they can't. Why? For the same reason that if you put ten com home, com if you put ten computers on your home router, and you try to download stuff all at the same time, your internet's going to slow down. Why? Because everybody's competing for that resource. Because all your computers come together into one router, has to go across that one cable to your modem and out to the internet. Well, the same po the same concept applies. You have your modem, and your neighbors have their modem, and your other neighbors have their modem. Everybody's got a modem. Well, guess what? All those modems converge onto one cable. It's a cable about this big around, but it's one cable, and that cable goes to the head end of the cable company, where it's actually translated across to the internet. So, the same concept that applies in your house applies to the real world. All your neighbors, everybody's trying to get on the internet, and you might notice your internet slows down at, say, 5 p.m., well, that's because everybody's coming home from work and they're getting on the internet and they're firing up Netflix and they're looking at CNN and they're doing all this good stuff. Well, yeah, it's going to slow you down. So what the cable company does to kind of alleviate that, that perceived slowdown is they throttle your bandwidth. And so when you buy a 10 megabit connection or a 20 megabit connection or a 40 megabit connection, they're throttling that connection because their hardware can be specifically set up to, to allow a certain speed. But at the end of the day, their system has a, a kind of a built-in uh, sensor network, right? So if everybody on your street has a 40 megabit connection, and, but everybody can't download 40 megabits simultaneously. So even if you pay for a 40 megabit connection, you're still going to have throttling going on from the cable company because at peak usage times, they need to ensure that everybody in their grid has access to the internet. So they don't want to give these three people over here super fast internet and everybody else has 56K modem speeds. So they're going to throttle everybody back so that everybody can have a moderate access to the internet. So no matter what you do between your modem at your house and your computer, you're not going to make your connection any faster unless you pay for it. And even then, unless you pay for a business connection, 
the rules are different for business connections than they are for a normal home consumer connection. So if you really want to have faster internet that has more bandwidth, that is not throttled, then you're going to have to shell out the extra money for a business connection because that's the way it works. Home users don't have to have what we call quality of service because they're home users. You know, if I have a business and I have a website, downtime of that website means I'm losing money. Therefore, the cable company is responsible for that when I pay for a business connection. So they have to assure my quality of service. As a home user, they don't have that requirement. These are FCC regulations. So they can throw out the bandwidth as they see fit to ensure that everybody has good internet. So we go through this whole video, and this guy is telling you to wrap this and do that and, you know, wrap this tape around your head and, you know, stick a pencil in your ear and all this good stuff. But at the end of the day, you just look like an idiot. And I hope you didn't slit your wrist because you probably weren't using safety scissors like you should have been if you were watching this video. So, uh, one more thing just so that you're educated. You've probably seen, you know, 10, 100, 1000 when you're dealing with cables. 10, 100, 1000 are link speeds. So if I have my computer and my router, there's a link between the two across that cable. Your link speed is how fast they theoretically could talk. So if you your little bar comes up after you plug your cable in in your windows and says, you know, you are now connected at 100 megabits or 1000 megabits. Well, that's your link speed. That's that's how fast your system could talk. So if you go look, if you click on that little computer icon in the corner, go ahead, right click on it and hit properties and it'll tell you your link speed and duplex. Link speed is how fast the link is between your computer and the device it's plugged into and duplex is whether you can talk to you, whether both devices can talk at the same time. There's half duplex which isn't used anymore which means I can talk and then I say I'm done talking now you can talk and then you talk and you tell me you're done talking and then I can talk. We can't talk at the same time. We can only talk one way. So half duplex really hasn't been used lately. The hardware is good enough nowadays. Everything is full duplex. That means I can talk to you and you can talk to me simultaneously if we're two computers. So link speed and duplex, that's how fast the link is between your computer and let's say your router. Now, the link speed has absolutely nothing to do with the data throughput that you're getting from the internet. So just because you're connected at a gigabyte per second to your router does not mean that you can download a gigabit, gigabyte per second from the internet because there is no way that your computer is fast enough or your internet connection is fast enough for you to download a gigabit per second but your link speed and duplex the computer they basically check the cable when you plug it in and so your computer knows the quality of that cable if it was a crappy cable the computer would throttle back that speed you'd see 10 megabits per second maybe I haven't seen anything lower than 10 megabits per second in years so I wouldn't ever expect to see it but 10 megabits per second is still faster than 1 megabit per second, which is what you're theoretically going to get from the internet on an average day anyway. So even with the worst cable you can buy nowadays, you're still not going to be able to double your speed by doubling your cable because your link speed between your system and your modem is 10 times faster than you're ever going to get anything from the internet. So the next time somebody tells you that you can double your speed from the internet or that your connection is not fast enough or you need 40 bits per second, megabits per second, just remember, most of the time you're going to be able to download one meg a second. If you've got five computers in your house, a five meg connection will be more than enough because the chances of you maxing out that connection with your five computers in your house at one time are pretty slim. So, be safe out there and save money because saving money is the name of the game. That's why I'm Handy Saves Money. So I'm saving you money by not making you pay for too expensive an internet connection by letting them sell you crap you don't need. I hope you enjoyed my rant. I don't rant very often, but I felt it was warranted in this situation, and I hope you all have a good night. I'll see you next time.